Hey folks, this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today I'm going to be sharing how to make dogwood flowers. We're going to be using white quilling paper strips. These are 1 8 inch wide. They're about 24 inches long. I also have a nice bright Kelly green here. We're going to be making some leaves. And then I also have what's called moss green. This is from Quilled Creations, and it's a nice in-between greenish yellow. We're going to be using that for the center of our flowers. I have a ruler here. If you want to be really precise, you're going to want to grab one of those. For glue, I am using uh, Elmer's in my needle nose container, and I also have some tacky glue for when I start putting the flowers together. You can use whatever quilling tool you like. I just have my needle tool here. Tweezers are going to be really, really helpful and also you're going to want some small craft scissors. We're going to be putting our pieces of our flower petals together on our cork board. I have mine covered with some parchment paper here. You can use wax paper as well. And then we're also going to be molding the flower. So I have my quilling paper mold. First thing we're going to do is take one piece of the bright white paper and like I said, these strips are 24 inches long. If your paper is smaller, that is okay. Your flowers will just be a little bit smaller. If you want to glue strips together to make them that long, that is also okay. The most important thing is that we rip the paper apart in half. We want two pieces that are exactly the same length. Once you have your paper strips, two that are the same size, you're just gonna roll the strip all the way on your quilling tool all the way from start to finish we're going to let it open up a little bit and then we're going to glue the end to keep it secure you've seen this a hundred times if you've been following me for a while i like to usually just let my coils open up in my hands i just think it makes a little bit more of a really precise coil instead of one side being bigger than the other. That's about it. It's okay if those last couple of layers don't completely open. Push that down a little bit. And then I'm gonna hold the center in one hand and pinch with the other hand. That keeps my center where I want it for a nice teardrop shape. Then we're going to take our other strip and do the exact same thing. Roll it start to finish and make the same shape. Once you have both of your teardrops made, we're going to give a very gentle pinch to one of the top corner sides. This is sort of optional. If you don't want to do this, part it's okay but it will have it will make the two pieces of the petal stick together a little bit better these teardrop shapes have a tendency to kind of want to spring away from each other when you're gluing them together if you just give a tiny pinch in that upper corner of the side where they're going to meet you'll, you'll get a little bit of a tighter seal we don't want it to be completely together all the way from top to bottom there's going to be a very small gap at the top of the flower petal but I am using pins to make sure that everything stays where I want it after I get it all set here I'm gonna hold it up so you can see the shape that we're looking for here we go a tiny little opening at the very top right there but then the bottom is sealed nice and tight and this is just one part of our dogwood flower. We're actually gonna need three more of these shapes to complete the four petals that each flower is going to have. While those petals are drying and sticking together, we're going to make the center of our flower. That's gonna be with that mossy green color. You can use yellow for this if you'd rather. This, I, just, I don't use this paper very often and I thought it fit really well to this part of the craft. We want these to be really, really thin. If you have one 16th inch strips, by all means use that. If you have two millimeter strips, that will also work. I don't have either in this color that I was looking for, so I'm just gonna take my scissors and very carefully 
cut it in half. I only need about four inches for this part though, so it doesn't take very long. We're gonna be using seven. I have eight here because that's just how the math worked out, but we're gonna be using seven of these for each flower. And all it is is a very, very tight coil, very small, very tight. Wind it up on my tool while it's still on the tool, put a little bit of glue on the end and give it a couple rolls to seal. This will also work on a slotted tool if that's what you prefer. You can use any one for this part at all. Okay, go ahead and take it off. And like I said, teeny tiny, we need seven of those for each flower. Now, next comes the most important bit of making these really look like dogwood flowers. Dogwood uh, petals have these sort of little spikes on the, on the end of them. And it's kind of tricky to make those, but what I found was really a good idea was using my tweezers towards the top, inside corner of just, I put them in just a couple of layers and give sort of a twist towards the center. And what that does is pull up those couple of layers. Then I can grab them on the outside, take my tweezers out, grab them and give them a little pinch. All right, I'm gonna do it to the other side. I know this is very different than anything we've normally done before. Tweezers in the first couple of layers of paper, it's not an exact number. Just about that towards the inside corner of that side. Give it a twist. Take the tweezers out. And then sometimes, again, I just need a little shaping. Give it a pinch or two. You can bend those pinches in as well. And that's about it. It looks like a little sort of a, a crab claw, those two little spikes. But that is how dogwood flowers grow. So you're gonna do that to all four of your flowers, petals, so excuse me, flower petals. And then we're gonna start gluing them together. I am going to be just putting a little bit of tacky glue on my board here on top of the parchment paper. And then just give a little bit of dips. You can use a, a brush for this or a toothpick, whatever you need. I just sort of I'm dipping them in and a little bit on this one too much get that side together and that's about the shape we're looking for at this point we're gonna let that dry for just a couple minutes and then we're gonna mold it while it's still wet in the meantime we're gonna take that bright green and we're going to make a leaf from that. You're gonna to want to take equal size strips again. You can make these whatever size you want. I'm just going to take about six inches, fold it up, and then tear that off and rip them apart so they're about even. This is gonna be very similar to the flower petals where we just roll them all the way and make a teardrop let that open up a little bit and glue it down And then, because we want these two parts of the leaves to really stick together, we're giving a pinch just like we did before on the petals. Gave a little bit of a pinch in that one side corner of the top. We'll do this one as well. Let it open up a little bit here. So that they're about the same size little glue on the end and print the seal one big squeeze on one side and then using my thumbs on the bottom a little bit of a squeeze on the top a nice flat bottom and then sort of a mountain dome on the top we're gonna glue this all the way down we want the entire thing 
to be together. If you want to use your board and pins for these, you're welcome to. I'm just gonna hold it for a few seconds, really push those two halves together. If you want to make them sort of curved, you can do that by pushing on one side. But that's about the shape you want for the leaves. And you can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can make a mix of different sizes. There we go. There's your leaves. So we waited for a few minutes and our tacky glue has set, but it has not completely dried all the way. It's not super hard. We're going to take the bottom of our quilling mold and just lay our flower on top one of the holes and just give it a gentle press in. That's going to give it more of a domed, realistic appearance of a flower blooming instead of just a flat flower. Those are fine too, but sometimes I do a little bit of both, mix it up, some flat and some molded, just to give it more of a lifelike sort of appearance. And then we're just going to dip seven of our little tiny moss green pegs in some glue and kind of put them in a circle with one in the middle. The one in the middle is going to be a little tricky because there's quite a big hole where the flower petals met on this one. Sometimes they uh, glue closer together and you don't have that big hole. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I put some glue all over the one that's going to go in the middle so it attaches to the rest that are already around in a circle. If that makes sense. There we go. You can see there, there's one in a circle and then the other six are around. And that is your dogwood flower. Now the other thing I wanted to say, just kind of a bonus, is what if you want dogwood uh, flowers that have sort of that pinkish hue to the edges. You could just make them with pink paper or sort of a little secret technique is to take some makeup, some eyeshadow or some blush, some sort of powdered pigment. Hello, there's me. And give a little bit of brush right on the edges. This paper from Quilled, Cre uh, it's not Quilled Creations, this is Craft Harbor paper, doesn't really absorb a lot of the pigment. It's very, very subtle. So you can see I'm kind of wiping some off that goes onto the paper underneath of it. It's very, very light. It's just a little dab. I have found that wetting my brush does help pack on the color a little bit, but for this project, really, really want it to be light anyway, so little tabs, little tabs. You can do the edges as well. Just a way to get a little bit extra color in your flowers. If you'd like to, when you're done packing on a color, you can give these a little bit of a spritz um, with a sealant or, or a brush on sealant. Also, uh, I did not do that to any of these, so I can't guarantee that every type of pigment isn't going to just wipe off again, but it is something to consider. You might want to add a little bit of a sealant as well. So here we go. I have a whole bunch of both colored dogwood flowers with different size leaves, and they're super pretty, perfect for spring. As always, don't forget to leave any questions you have in the comment section, and I'll answer them as soon as I can. I will also leave links to every supply you're going to need, and every paper I use in the description box for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be around for my next video. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye.